Hello everyone, Adam here with E-Trailer. Today we're doing a lot of water pumps, but this one is the Lipper Components Flowmax Freshwater RV Pump. So this pump is a 12 volt pump. So all you really have to do is just run ground and power to it and you're good to go. It is gonna pump out about three gallons per minute, which is great for some of your smaller type campers, even some of the bigger ones too. And it is gonna pump out about 50 PSI. This is relatively quiet just because of the soft mount here. And whether you're just replacing or upgrading, it's gonna be a good one just because all of them that we sell here, they are gonna have the same footprint. So it's gonna fit. The customer really wanted a little bit more pressure, not as much down here, but mainly in the shower. But one thing I noticed is the pressure is actually better than the one we pulled out, which is good. And that's only a five PSI difference. So that's kind of cool. Some of them have a lot of pulsing. We have the 5.5 gallon 60 PSI one in here and it was pulsing so much worse than this and it was extremely loud. That is one thing that I really like about this one. I can hardly hear it running. I think it's running right now, but it's really quiet. So let's go see if this one's gonna give the proper pressure for the shower that our customer wanted. So what we've been doing is I take this and I'm putting it just in line right here. All are about the same distance away from our roof. And let's see if it gets up there because the one we had before didn't even reach this. So, okay. Water pressure, check. The 5.5 gallon pump was a C-Flow pump. And this one was extremely loud and yeah, the one that we just installed is three gallon, and this is a 5.5 gallon. This one pushes about 60 PSI, and this one that we just installed is about 50 PSI. But to be honest, it really isn't much of an upgrade. I didn't like this one at all, it was louder. We could see more pulsing, and the water pressure wasn't really that much better. So if you really think going bigger is better, Honestly, half the time it isn't. It really just depends on your specific rig and what you're looking for. But up until this point, the Hydromax was my favorite just because it was quiet. It gave great pressure. And this is a three gallon per minute pump and it gives you about 45 PSI. So this was my favorite up until now, but there's nothing telling me that the Lippert components three gallon one that were just installed isn't any better than this. So I think it's pretty much tied for first. It's quiet, good pressure, and I'm not really gonna run out of my water that quick just because it's three gallons per minute and not five and a half. A lot of you guys were asking if these are self-priming. If you're buying a water pump from us, it's self-priming. We just give you those options just because why buy a pump that makes you do more work? So all you gotta do is hook it up, make sure there's water in your tank, of course, and then turn it on and it's ready to rip. Between all the pumps, the main difference is obviously gallons per minute, PSI, and then whether it's 115 volt or 12 volt, if you stick with the 12 volt, they literally all install the same. It's got the same footprint, everything just screws on in, and then you just put two wires together. And the same with the 115 volt as well, but it's all the same. If you're worried about it not fitting, it's gonna fit, they're all basically the same size. So. If you want to stick around, we're going to show you what we did to get this thing installed. If you're performing maintenance, maybe just fixing something or just replacing your whole entire water pump, you got to find out where it is. What I found best to do is run it and see if you can hear it. We want to put it a little bit farther away from the kitchen sink because typically it's around that area. So I'm going to go in the bathroom here, turn on the pump and then run a little bit of water to see. I don't know if you can hear that, but that is what we really want to kind of figure out exactly where it's at. They're typically near the kitchen. So kind of start there and you really got to use your ears to really find out where it's at. Usually it's behind a weird hidden little panel. So we were following the sound. We thought it was right next to the hot water heater, but it wasn't. It was actually over here. And again, right next to the sink. So step one, find the pump, check. Before we do the swap, we wanna see what we're working with before, just to give us a base to see if we're increasing our pressure. So let me turn this pump on. So let's turn this on. And a decent amount of pressure. 
it almost goes up to the vent not really but not the best now for the sinks the sinks actually have a decent amount of pressure definitely enough to clean some dishes but the problem really is in the shower that's what we're really trying to solve here and that's why we're really replacing this pump before we do anything to the pump we need to cut power you can do it a bunch of different ways you can just go and pull a fuse you can maybe just flip a little breaker on the inside but what i'm doing just to make sure everything doesn't have power just in case is we do have a battery shut off so i'm just going to turn that off just to make sure that there's no power running that pump whatsoever to get all the water out of the lines if you have a valve like this it's going to be very very easy so all we got to do with this valve is just kind of turn it like this it's going to cut off the water source and then it's going to bring it down to this tube which is going to suck in air but if you don't have one in here we do have one so if you are replacing your pump i highly suggest doing it but if you don't have one on your pump and you need to take it out right now just make sure to have a couple little bit of towels and stuff you'll have a little bit of water trying to come back but we don't have to worry about that so now that i turn that valve it's going to be taking an air from this tube so now all we really need to do is turn on the faucet and let it run and it's going to take a little bit of time but you'll see some air pockets start to come through pressure is going to go down it's going to start spitting for a while it's going to let this run for a little bit to get all that air out and then a little bit yeah see all that air so it's going to do this for a little bit just let it run until basically nothing comes out but air it's a little tough to see in there it's kind of a small space so hopefully we get it for you but i'm gonna go ahead and just take this thing off the ground there's just four different screws just so it's gonna be a little bit easier for me to access all the different hoses and such So it is extremely tight in here, but basically what I'm gonna do over here, this little white, little 90 degree, there's just a little nut on there. I'm just gonna loosen that and that'll come off. And then on this side, I'm gonna loosen this just because our new pump does come with this piece. So I'm gonna disconnect this and that side, and then of course cut the wires, but super, super tight. So I need to get two hands in there to do it. Once all of our connections are cut, and all the wires are disconnected. This whole thing should come right out. So let's prepare the pump before we put it in just because there's not a whole lot of room down there. So we can take these off. You can either just try to pull them off, but the best, easiest way is just to twist it because the inside of these caps are threaded. But you can throw those away. We're not going to use them anymore. So take those off. And of course, with uh, of course with any type of water fitting, we do want to seal it up. So we have this have some thread tape. So also, what you want to do is just kind of notice where how you're going to be threading it. So I'm just going to go like this, just so the end isn't going to get caught up in the threads. So we're going to cover as many threads as we can, all of them ideally. But you don't need a whole lot, maybe like one or two times around at most. And do your best to kind of keep it straight. Well, that's pretty good. And I just like to take my fingers and kind of run over it. Just because then the cap, or whenever we make our fitting, it's not going to give us near as much uh, trouble. Do that for the other side, same exact deal. Just like that. Once that's done, you can put this stuff away. Won't need it anymore. So let's take a look at these arrows. I don't know if you guys can see it, but the arrows are pointing this way. So what that basically means is the water is coming in from your tank on this side, and it's going out to all your faucets and your shower on this side. So we wanna filter that water before it goes into the pump. This filter comes with the kit, and I'm just gonna put it on here because it's a little bit easier of course because there's not a whole lot of room down there so do as much work up here as you can twist that on there just like that and then these do come with the kit but with ours we don't really need to use it but if you're just literally just taking hose clamps you can put that on one side 
put this on the other if that's your setup but this customer does not have that setup so we're not going to use these you can put those wherever you want so now what we want to do is if you do have valve like this i just think it's so much easier just to take it off of that and then put it on separately just because this little tube is kind of a pain and it's really on there i like the seal that it has and i don't feel like trying to wrestle it back on there so again just do as much as you can before you put it in there now we're pretty much good and all these water pumps basically have the same footprint so i can actually reuse the holes that were already drilled out prior and it does not come with mounting hardware so just use the hardware that you had on the pump that you're replacing to install this i'm going to need to really get in there to make all these connections and such so i'm going to do that because we both can't fit in there at the same time but basically all i'm going to do is just connect this to this side that's where the water comes from and then this little fitting right here is going to go on this end that's where the water goes and then of course we're just going to take our little wires right here and we're just going to connect them up so we are pretty much done all the connections are made and if you see these little wire nuts don't do this we're literally just doing this because we put so many water pumps in this camper just because we're testing them all out what you need to do is get the heat shrink buck connectors we have them here at e-trailer just add them to your cart whenever you're done and one thing i did notice about this we were doing some other pumps just look at that like that's good so that means you know it's completely isolated so a lot of that vibrations is going to happen to the pump but not send it down through the floor and you're not going to hear it or feel it which is awesome one last thing i need to do is just turn this valve and again this valve is super super clutch so i would definitely get one of those we have them here at e-trailer too so now that we're good we just need to turn on power and check for leaks now that we are good, we can go ahead and flip the switch and give everything power again. So the main power is on, but there's one switch that we have back here that activates the pump. So once I turn this on, it should go. I kind of hear it. Okay, it's definitely on. It's definitely on. And not that loud. And this is self-priming, so that's kind of nice. So it's going to do it all on its own. We're going to wait until it builds up pressure. And it is pretty much there. But there's probably some air in the lines. So what you want to do is go up to all your faucets and open them up. They're just going to kind of spit out for a little bit. There we go. And we'll do that back here as well. Just on anything that really uses water. So that faucet, that faucet. All right, we're good. And then the shower, I don't wanna get wet. There we go, no more air in the lines. We are good to go. There's no leaks, everything's powered up, everything's working well. So that's basically it for our look at the Lipper Components Flomax Freshwater RV water pump.